Hi folks, uh, this is Daniel once again. I just want to thank Alyssa Binion Ministries uh, for allowing me to uh, speak once again. And it's a great honor and privilege, glory to God. And uh, as Alyssa Binion Ministries is diversifying to other avenues of business and ministry and things of that nature, uh, most likely going to be a regular guest on, uh, on her ministry channel. The bottom line is, I want to give glory to God, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the only one that can uh, forgive you of your sin, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, make you feel whole, give you eternal life in heaven. I just want to uh, articulate and encourage all the, thi all the things about the, um, the perfect Word of God, the Bible, and all that God is. God is many things. And as I was talking about last week, love. God is love. The Bible is a story of love. It's the word, words, the perfect words of God articulated into various translations throughout the world from the original Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, and all translated into many different languages. The best-selling book by hands down worldwide the absolute perfect Word of God. And it has guided and been a light and a beacon throughout numerous and numerous multiple generations. And love is the only true force and affiliation and feeling that really connects human beings together. Without love you feel empty inside. You feel depressed or you feel like an empty shell. And the only thing that, that can fill that, that hole in your heart, that hole in your being, is the love of God. And we reviewed last week about the four loves, the agape love, eros love, philia love, and storge. I hope I'm saying it right with my Greek friends out there. Stork, storge, storge love. And we talked briefly about unconditional love last week. And this is the most powerful love that anyone can ever feel in this world. Unfortunately, in my experience, and you read the media, you look at worldwide events, and you say, wow, what a, what, where is the love in this world? Why are people hating? Why are people doing horrible atrocities to their fellow human beings? Why? Well, they just don't are not exercising the love of God. They haven't experienced it, or maybe if they have experienced it, they're denying the love of God. And the love of God one of its very huge elements is peace, being peaceful to other people. And Jesus, as, as you may have already heard or know, he, uh, he demonstrated the greatest amount of unconditional love you could ever, ever have in this life was the self-sacrificing love and expecting nothing in return. And he died on the cross and rose on the third day to give, to give all who believe eternal life. And the Bible says those that do not believe, according to the Bible, their only other pl only alternative is to burn in hell forever and ever and ever. We don't want to think about hell. We don't want to speak about hell. But hell is a real place. Heaven is a real place. This life is temporary. And when people get older, when they get into their 60s and 70s, they look back on their life, they're realizing time is short. And I realize time is short as I'm, in, I'm, I'm nearly 40 years old. Time is short. And when this world needs a lot more agape love. And I, I don't know if any of you um, read the last one. The, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love is patient, love is kind, love does not keep any record of wrong, and on and on in that amazing word of God, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that talks about the love of God. That is what God's love is, and, it's, and, and that's demonstrated through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is left behind when Jesus went into heaven to, to be at the right hand of God, and he's going to come back one day. But before he comes back to t um, rule and to reign and to take up his church, the Holy Spirit is left behind to give witness of, of, of Jesus' amazing works and miracles and, and, and around the world. And that is the unconditional love that we have. 
we I know that a lot of you think, wow, this is wild and woolly and crazy, and you know, an unconditional love does it exist? Yes, it does exist. But I know in a lot, a lot of the world today, we focus on the eros love, the sexual love, the most rawest form of love, which is all physical contact. It's a time and a place for that love, that sexual love, but it's so focused on through pornography and lust and perversion and distractions that people have on this, on this concept of, oh, if I love somebody, I might as well have sex with that person or get some sort of sexual act with them. But honestly, if, if you all know people that have worked in the sex industry, ex-sex industry workers, or those that have been engaged in some sort of form of, of what we consider perverted things, perverted sexual acts, or some of you may think all those sexual acts are completely normal. But according to the Bible, there is a standard of what sexual practice is, but marriage being between a man and a woman, and, and marriage and marriage is supposed to have free sexual expression, produce children, and, and enjoy sex. But we've, we, we twist that, and we, and, and, but the, even something higher than that, let's get back to agape love, where you feel the unconditional love. And one of the point of interest I wanted, um, as reviewing, all that's all review from last week, uh, is the philia and the storge love, the storge love being the brotherly love, the family love. Family's in town and you realize, well, I really miss my parents, talk to them on the phone, but seeing them in person really, you feel that, that family love. And maybe some of you have family that you don't feel the family love, but then the body of Christ steps in and gives you that family love, that unconditional love. That's what the body of Christ has, because you, some of you have made choices to follow Christ with all your heart, mind, and soul, and, and, and forsaken all other than the family of Christ, family of God. The Christ, um, is your apps is your your family. They're the ones. Your your small group leaders. Your small group um, home fellowships. Those are your real, true family because you've made that decision of faith. You felt the unconditional love of God. And then there's the love among friends, the friendship love, which is you know lifelong friendships, the temporary friendships you have, maybe for a certain season you have friends and people, long-term friends. But I want to give a, an example of, of what the um, example of the philia love and the storge love, the brotherly love and the love among friends is in the Bible there's reference to the Good Samaritan and that's my point of em emphasis today is just to share a story of, of, of who is your neighbor, who is the one that you need to be a neighbor too. Is it the person, the homeless man walking across the street? How can you help that neighbor? Well, the story of the Good Samaritan was about a man walking down the road and he was robbed. He was beaten. He was, he was abused. He was mistreated. He was, and, and, and he was left for dead get, and probably get knocked out. But, but a Samaritan man came by, which you know, everybody doesn't like certain ethnic backgrounds, but anyway, there was certain other prejudice rolling around when Jesus told this story. But then I want to point out the fact that the good, he was called a good Samaritan because he did good things. And I encourage you to do good things. Where he, 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 he took the man off the side of the road, bandaged his wounds with wine and oil, helped the man, took him to the innkeeper and said, here, take, um, I'll, I will give you more money for any other any other expenses that you may have. And he helped the person on the side of the road who, who could have, well, very well could have died because many people walked by, many different people of many very missed walks of life, many different denominations, many different issues of life, walked by and said, well, that's not my neighbor. Oh, that uh, I, somebody else will take care of that. Oh, somebody, you know. But how many times have I, I've done it? How many times have you done it? Oh, somebody else will take care of that. Well, encourage you to, you know, if at all possible, and you have the resources, you have the time, you make time to help someone out. You helped him out, and the question is, who is your neighbor? And I think that you're, that was love among, that was brotherly love. This is your brother, you know, you may not know him, but you're using, you know, story love and love among friends. Because you can, how many of you know you can make instantaneous friends within two or three minutes when you're talking to people? Because some people are that nice, but even this, you can't. But helping them out, being being good to people, because when you're good to people, that turns away wrath. It turns away uh, their bad attitude, their hatred towards you when you're good to them, and that and and that's another topic, another sermon. But loving your enemies, loving those that mistreat you, helping, being a good neighbor.
end. I'm just going to continue um, in this vein, uh, I don't know how many weeks in a row, concerning the four types of love. And, uh, and uh, the, it, I trust that this encourages you. Now, if you're in a position where you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, for those of you that are lost, don't realize where you're going. You're th fumbling through life, going through issues with family, friends, neighbors, co-workers. And you realize the love of God has penetrated your heart. Well, I would like you to pray with me. They traditionally call this a sinner's prayer. It really doesn't matter what it's called. It's, if, you, you, it's praying to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you can have your life not only life in this in this time in this earth earthly life but in life to come have your reserve your space and have us pray dear lord jesus i'm a sinner and i can't save myself and i'm i'm lost and without hope and lord 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 jesus i give my life to you give you absolute control over my life because i believe in your death burial and resurrection and I present my sin to you to wash it away clean and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I thank you God for saving me and I, and I pledge to, to, to live my life for you from, from the, for the very rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Now if you've prayed that prayer, congratulations, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of God. The Bible says that angels in heaven rejoice over one soul that has confessed Jesus as Lord. Angels are rejoicing now. Find a Bible-believing church wherever you're at in the world. If you can't find a Bible-believing church, found the fellowship that you're with, the home Bible study, finding them online, getting encouragement, and being connected with video conference if at all possible. Be blessed. Until I see you again, I'm Daniel, and a wonderful day.